important takeaways will be firstly there is no organization which cannot approve its efficiency and effectiveness and cannot use its resources better for the purposes to which it's set up and in doing that two things are fundamental systems controls and structures are very important you need to understand the finances, you need to get the operations, you need the logistics right. All those systems are right. But unless you can take people with you on what is always a difficult journey of trying to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of an organisation, unless you can take people with you, all the investment you make in better functions, better systems, will come to nothing. So the first takeaway is people really matter and that leads directly into leadership because to me leadership is about getting others to come with you on difficult journeys that they wouldn't probably otherwise choose to come. If everyone wants to come with you, no leadership's involved. Getting others to come with you on these difficult journeys is what leadership is about. And then the th second takeaway is that governance structures really matter. Who is to make decisions, on what legitimacy, and at what timing? We need to know that in every organisation that we are approaching. So I'm very pleased to be talking about leadership and governance because it seems to me that they come together, and funnily enough, they come together around the same theme of let's get the systems right, let's get the structures right, let's get the evaluation right. But unless you get the people to come with you, you won't have an organisation which actually increases its effectiveness and decreases its efficiency. And that's where I started. So the first lesson about getting others to come with you is you have to realise what it's like to be someone who is not you. What it is like to walk in the shoes of others, to see the world through the eyes of others. And that is the first step to getting others to come with you because you begin then to understand their anxieties, their aspirations, and their real concerns about the journey in front of them, which will be to do with their own circumstances. So you need to be able to walk in the shoes of others. Paradoxically, you also need them to be able to see that you are not all powerful, all knowing, even though you want to inspire confidence, but that you need to rely upon others in this difficult journey as well. So two things, walking in the steps of others and for them to realise that you are a confident leader, you do have great skills and experience, but you will not be able to do this alone and that you require collaborative arrangements with others, you require others to contribute skills and experience which you perhaps don't have. Is it possible to teach integrity? It's possible to teach what integrity is, but it isn't possible to make someone have integrity. That is something which comes within their value systems, within the things that they hold as being their moral compass. So one can say the moral compass of this organisation is to respect our customers, uh, to treat our uh, colleagues fairly, um, and to obey the law. One can say that, but the question of whether or not everybody feels that is an empirical question. Now, one thing's for sure, they won't feel that if the leadership shows that they don't treat customers fairly, they don't treat colleagues with, with respect, and they, they don't obey the law. Their leading by example will show that integrity has got no place. But even if the, so the first thing is the leadership has to demonstrate through their own actions, through their own example, that they really do have integrity. And they also have to be very clear that there are lines that will not be um, broken, if you like, and that uh, there will be a respect, for example, for whistleblowing, that there will be a respect for people who speak truth to power, that there will be a respect for difference, um, and that people will listen carefully if there is challenge. And out of that, the way the judgments are formed can then show whether people have got integrity or not. So can you teach integrity? You, you can teach what it is, and you can demonstrate by example what it is, and you can be exceptionally clear when ethics are breached 
and you can be very clear that that is something which will not be tolerated. For women colleagues, for women who are doing the EMBA, I think the most important thing is for them to be themselves. I strongly believe that um, as a woman, you don't think all the time, I am a woman and therefore I must do this. You think of yourself as a collection of skills and experiences, aspirations, desires, and, um, and an ethical framework. And you find ways in which you can um, fulfill yourself. So my own role and my own history has been one of doing things that I care a lot about, that I believe I can make a difference, and I haven't really been very worried by whether I was a woman or a man. In fact, I've got two little um, jokes that come from the US. I mean, one is a bumper sticker from the 1960s which says, women who want to be like men lack ambition. And I feel that that's a pretty good guidance. We don't want to be like men, we want to be like ourselves. And as women, we will come in many different ways. So the first thing is to, to be yourself and confidently um, to uh, seek ways in which you can add value to the organisations in which you work. I myself haven't directly experienced any very clear um, discrimination. I have encountered stereotypical responses to myself, which implies that um, I will always be in a particular role because I'm a woman. Um, I've chosen not to fight those, but just to find a way of, in which I can be myself. Um, so have confidence, be self-reliant, Make a judgment about the way in which you can lead a life which will be fulfilling for you on all counts. And I would say this to men as well. But we have families. We have um, a life outside of work. And it is really important that we make decisions which will lead to an overall fulfilling life. And I say that to men as well as for women. Um, I think it's now more possible for women to talk about their domestic arrangements than it probably was for me 35 years ago. Um, but I don't want to put this in the women's brackets because I think it's something that all men and women should, um, should pay attention to. Context is all important. I've just recently travelled in Rwanda, in Democratic Republic of Congo and in Myanmar, as well as in China, US and, um, and UK, and I've been involved with organisations in all those. And to begin with, each of those geographical and cultural contexts is very different. Add that, that organisations are different contexts, there are different ways in which things are done, there are different cultures. And I think that it's absolutely essential for leaders to understand the context in which they're working. But having said that, the four things I started off with, which is efficiency and effectiveness can always be improved. Systems and controls are important, but they're nothing unless you have people coming with you and governance structures that are appropriate for making decisions and uh, giving legitimacy. Those four things are the same, but the way in which they will be interpreted will depend very much on the context. Can you seek to improve performance in not-for-profit organisations for those that are founded for charitable or public service? My answer is always yes. It's more complicated because there isn't one clear bottom line. But we know that in commercial organisations that bottom line is now put within a balanced scorecard. And with the not-for-profit organisations, one needs to understand what their purpose is. And the purpose may be the reduction of poverty, it may be the improvement of health status of women and children, um, it may be uh, better science in um, uh, a university. That gives you the touchstone by which you're going to evaluate performance and you're going to see how you can use your managerial and leadership skills in order to improve performance. So for those people who say, oh well, not for profit, that just means that anyone can do exactly what they want, I find that to be completely wrong. But the essence of something which is set up for public and social good is that you evaluate the performance for delivering public and social good with reasonable utilisation of resources. You don't measure it according to a commercial bottom line.